Well, biologists in Germany and Indonesia have observed a wild orangutan applying a plant with known medicinal properties to its wound, a first for a wild animal. The male Sumatran orangutan, who had sustained a facial wound, repeatedly applied sap from a climbing plant with anti-inflammatory and pain-relieving properties to his injury. Study lead Caroline Shupley says the action gives biologists an idea of the orangutan's cognitive capacity. So we follow these orangutans regularly in our research area. They're part of a long-term research project that has been going on for many years. And it was just a normal day for us, just observing them every day uh, business for us. So we were uh, observing his behavior, writing it down on our spreadsheets. And then all of a sudden he started this uh, unusual behavior that we have never seen before in any of our orangutans. And what was that unusual behavior? Um, so he started chewing the leaves of a plant and he first he fed on the plant for a little while and then he, and then he proceeded to like use the chews from that that the chewing produced to um, touch his wound with that chews and then he proceeded to smear the, the plant mesh that he produced from chewing on the plant onto his wound and completely plastered the wound, so completely covered the wound. Um, yeah, and then he continued to feed on the plant. So why is this significant? We know animals in the wild have been observed self-medicating before. So it's the first case of wound treatment with a plant species that has known medical properties. So even though um, animals, wild animals have been observed to use medical plants before, but it was for internal things um, or, or just the things that are not wounds. In this case, it's the first time that we see a wild animal use a plant with medical properties to treat a wound. And what was the plant Rackus used to treat himself? Um, so the plant is called, we call it Akar uh, Kuning or Akar Palo. Um, it's a vine that grows in our research area and also is quite widespread across Southeast Asia. Um, and it's known by, um, yeah, for its medical properties throughout that area. So people use this plant to treat a series of conditions, but also to treat wounds because it has anti-inflammatory and anti-bacterial uh, uh, properties. Do we know how Rackus got his facial wound in the first place? We are not sure, but it happened during a time where he was involved in fights with other males. So because we rarely see these fights and we rarely see wounds, it was quite, uh, for us it's quite obvious that the two things are, are most likely connected. So he probably obtained a wound from a fight with another male. Um, that's, that's, I guess for us, that's the most likely scenario. So after Rekka started applying the leaves, how long did it take for the wound to heal? Only a couple of days. So after a couple of, of, of days, it started closing. And after a couple of weeks, uh, he was observed again and the wound was almost completely healed. You could uh, hardly tell that it was there in the first place. And Carolyn, what do we know about these leaves? Are they commonly used by humans? Yeah, they are. Um, Loads of communities in that area use this plant because of its, its medical properties. And that's what also um, our local assistants immediately told us, that they actually this plant is actually used by, by local um, medical people to treat wounds. Um, yeah, so it was quite easy for us to make the connection. And then we, when we researched it a bit in more depth, we realized that it, has, it is actually quite well researched and has, has all these known uh, medical properties. So do you have any idea how Rackus came to treat himself? Yeah, so I guess there are two, uh, two scenarios, two possible scenarios. Either he figured it out himself or he learned it from another orangutan. And now we know that orangutans, particularly in our research area, they learn a lot via observational social learning. So they observe other orangutans and then pick up the skills of these individuals. So it, it's a likely scenario that he observed somebody else doing it and then um, included it in his own behavioural repertoire, but it could have also been that he was the one who figured it out. We, we don't know for sure. And Carolyn, what significant insight do you think this offers us, offers scientists? Yeah, so I guess what we can say for sure is that this behaviour reaches back a very long time from an evolutionary perspective. And because orangutans uh, show it and humans show it, it is likely that our last common ancestor also showed this behaviour. And that suggests that the, the basic cognitive capacities needed to perform a behavior like this were present already a long time ago. Um, but what we don't know is what exactly these cognitive capacities are. So we don't know 
to what extent he understood his behavior. That remains the big question, I would say. But it shows that everything you need to come up with a behavior like this um, is present in orangutan and, and probably also in the last common ancestor of humans in orangutan. Dr. Caroline Shupley, many thanks. Thank you.